Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started with head coach Jay Johnson. If you have a question, please raise your hand. First question, Michael Lev. Um, you, you've been in the situation that Coach Yeski is facing this week, at least similar situation. You've faced San Diego, I think, a couple times, once when you were in Nevada, uh, once when you were here. What is that like, just personally, emotionally? Good question, Michael. I think it's, um, I think it's, it's something I just tried to take a lot of pride in. You know, um, when I was at Nevada um, in 2015, we won the Mountain West Conference Championship. San Diego won the West Coast Conference Championship, and you know you have a high level of uh, high level relationships on both sides of it. You know, obviously, you know Nate's done a great job here in, in coaching our guys and and developing them, and you know he recruited a lot of those guys and, and coached some of them at, at Oregon State. So. Um, you know, we're real people. So, you know, there's, there's feelings and those kinds of things, but you know, he's a pro and knows what the task is and, and we'll manage that well. Can you take us back to the summer of 2019 and just kind of uh, recount how, uh, coach Yeski ended up becoming a wildcat? Yeah. Um, you know, I really liked where our program was at. I mean, we played for the national championship in 2016, you know, we were ranked in the top 10 in um for a lot of the year in 2017 um and then in 2019 we had the best offense in college baseball and, and frankly we just weren't good enough on the mound and um felt like we needed a little bit of a, a reboot and you know there was nobody better in, in my opinion to to help do that than than nate and um i've, I've said this many times um I just wanted the, the competitive culture of our pitching staff to be elite and, you know, getting a chance to compete against uh, him for a number of years, you know, Arizona, Oregon state, San Diego, Oregon state, Air, San Diego, UNLV. Um, you know, I think there was just a really solid respect that, you know, we both want to accomplish the same things. And, and I believed he could help, help our pitchers do that. Um, and I believe that uh, it was the right time. You know what I mean? Some of the guys that are making, contributions were coming into the program and could start at, at that time. And, um, you know, very pleased with, with how it's, it's transpiring. Can you think of uh, an individual pitcher on the current staff uh, that Nate has really helped out something specific that he tweaked or changed or um, did to help that player uh, better achieve his potential? Another really good question. Um, I think there's several that have just improved, you know, um, you know, Randy Abshire comes to mind um, just in terms of, of being a usable left-hander. Uh, Preston Price really comes to mind. Um, those guys probably stand out a little bit more. I think he's done a good job in, in helping those guys develop a, a blueprint um, in terms of routines, discipline, and those kinds of things that lead to your success. I mean, you guys, you know, see Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There's a lot more that goes into this thing in, in recruiting and developing to put your guys in position to be successful. So um, I think just, it's just, I would call it a, a 365 day a year clock that, that we run in Arizona baseball. And I think our players would tell you that. And I think some guys grew up a little bit more just from a maturity standpoint, got a good template, got a good blueprint and have really improved because of all of those things. And so um, it's probably more of a general statement than, than any one specific. Next question, Ari Koslow. Oregon State's hitters have struck out the most as a team uh, in the Pac-12 this year. I know you, you know, you like to uh, focus on every team, every game, you know, like the same. But is there anything to put more of an emphasis on letting the pitchers be a little bit more aggressive this weekend against a team that strikes out as much as they do? I think uh, probably it comes down to executing pitches. You know, getting ahead, don't strike one, two of the first three. And then really just executing strikes, slow strikes in and out and change in speeds. I think a thing that our team has done a good job of is the, the things that, you know, one week one for us, you know, are, the, are very similar to the things that won last night's game for us or last weekend's games for us. And, and those will, will carry forward and, and baseball rewards you for the play. And I think with the pitchers, you know, strikes, slow strikes in and out, change in speeds, uh, field in their position, pitching with great tempo to keep the defense allowing the offense to settle into the game. Um, you know, those are things that I'm very confident in the guys that we run out there that they do really well. And I think it'll be the same. 
And then on the flip side, Oregon State's pitchers lead the conference in strikeouts. How important is it to kind of get ahead in the count for the hitters this weekend and kind of try to control the count uh, for the hitters? Yeah, I mean, it, they're they're a good staff. There's no question about that. I, I mentioned that before. Um, I think, uh, you know, last night after the New Mexico State game, I kind of just did a general overview looking at stuff and they have really good stuff. And so we need to control our at bats, you know, do the things in our offensive blueprint um, at a high level. And that's what we need to do. And, and they're going to get you out sometimes, you know, as good pitching does and, and continue to stay mature and, and focused in our approach. And um, I'm confident that, that we can, and we will do that, but we need to stay disciplined in the things that make us successful. Next question back to Michael. You know, piggybacking off that last question, you know, Oregon State is first in the league in ERA, strikeouts per nine innings, whip. You guys are first in many offensive categories. Are you looking forward to the challenge of facing a high-level pitching staff, not only, you know, for this weekend, but knowing that you're going to see similar types of pitchers down the road? Yeah, I, I think every weekend's an opportunity to create value for your team, and I think that's a good point. I think, um, you know, if you want to go where you want, we want to go, you're going to play against the best teams and the best players. And you're going to have to probably win a game. Well, you are, if you're going to win the national championship, you got to do that in Omaha. I can't do that at, at high Corbett field. So playing on a road um, creates value. Um, so, yeah, I think there's a lot that we can take from that, you know, in itself, you know, the focus will come back to what do we need to do, do to be successful today? Cause you can't win a game three weeks from now, Friday, you can win Friday's game. And so we'll, uh, we'll take them one at a time and, and try to do that. Next question, Matt Moreno. I know mound, in, mound presence is important for, for pitchers. How much have you sensed that the pitchers have maybe taken on some of Coach Esky's personality in that regard? Probably a better question for them. I, I again, coming back to the competitiveness, like I sense that, but competitive people are confident people. And like when Garrett Irvin came here, he was a winner. He was confident. And so now you take that makeup piece and then you add coach's ability to help develop all of his strengths to collect outs. You really have something, you know what I mean? A guy like Chandler Murphy has always won, always been successful. You know, probably the most important recruit in the state of Arizona for the class of, of 2019. And you take his pitch ability, put him with coach Esky, give him a blueprint give him, um, you know, a template for how to maximize that stuff and be prepared. And then you see really good results. Like he can come into games with poise and composure. So I love what I'm seeing uh, relative to all of those things. And I think Coach Eski deserves a lot of credit for lining them up correctly. And the players deserve a lot of credit for getting the most out of their ability. It's, it's, it's come together the way I wanted it to come together. I know this is going to be different for every player, but you mentioned professional at bats quite a bit this season. What does that look like to you just kind of in general? Yeah, I think it's, it starts with managing the strike zone and, and not expanding when they're not good pitches to hit and hitting mistakes when you do get them. Um, you know, when you face good pitchers, they're going to get you out and you got to be okay with that, but you got to make those outs as hard to come by as possible. So it really comes down to, managing the zone, hitting mistakes, battling with two strikes, what we call moving the offense um, is, is a big, big part of, of our offensive philosophy and everybody doing their job to be able to do that. And the game will dictate what that at bat looks like for you to do it. And, and if you can do all those things then you can be a productive hitter and, and we're very fortunate, we don't just have nine, we have more guys that can do that. And uh, it's been fun to watch. And, and I think last night's game, was a really good, really good indication of that. You know, I felt like we're coming off a big weekend, got a, a great weekend coming up here. Uh, I felt like we were a little tired, even though we played well, I still feel like we were a little tired. And, and at this point in the season, rightfully so, but to watch the discipline turn into, you know, free base, hard contact, you know, RBI, team at bat. I think it was very indicative. Um, of what we've done. I feel like the last month and a half has been like that. Um, and it's been, been fun to watch. Next question, Brian Peterson. Uh, did you uh, happen to look at any of the, the film or 
box score from Oregon State last night against Portland, it seemed kind of strange seeing them lose a midweek game like that. Is that just an anomaly or what can you tell us about this team compared to maybe previous ones? Sorry, I, I just look at that and I just think it's the nature of baseball and it's, it's different than basketball and football. And that is so hard for the common fan person, media person to get their head around. And, um, you know, it's the pitcher, for instance, mm -hmm. it has so much to do with that. Um, you know, last night we were behind two to one in the third inning and it was a walk, a hit by pitch, a ground ball that wasn't hit hard enough to turn two on that we had to throw across and then a walk and a wild pitch and you're down two to one and you're sitting there going like, wait a minute, what did that team do mm -hmm. <laughs> to get a run right there? So I think just the nature of baseball makes it that way. I have no different opinion of Oregon State going into Friday than I did probably two or three weeks ago. They're going to pitch well. They play at home. They're a highly competitive team. There's some, some young position players that have made a really positive impact. You know, there's, there's guys that are older. So I, I, don't, I don't think anything about that, Brian. I just I, I know they used a lot of guys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were able to kind of get through our game last night with three guys, which was probably a good thing. Um, but I expect a highly competitive series and it's one of those weekends where it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, it, it, you come to Arizona and you think about like, Hey man, this is what I signed up for. You know what I mean? And we've had 10 weekends in a row like that. And so it's, it's pretty exciting. And uh, you know, just looking for our team to stay in character and got to play well to win. And, and I don't feel any different about that after looking at that. So is it fair to say you, you look more at, what they do on the weekends when they're playing the similar kind of series that this would be because they'd be using the, the different pitchers that they use their weekend pitchers as opposed to their Tuesday pitchers. Um, yeah. I mean, we, anything we can take value from, we do, um, you know, Tuesday was their most recent game. So there'll be things that we look at that we have not yet um, looked at last night's game specifically that if we can use, then we'll use it. And then obviously you know, when we're preparing for an opposing pitcher, you know, the starters, the starter on Friday, the starters, the starter on Saturday and, and Sunday. So um, those guys had nothing to do with, with last night's result, you know, just like our guys didn't, you know, the pitch on the weekend didn't have anything to do with our game last night. So whatever we can use to our advantage, we try to use to our advantage. Thank you. Next question back to Michael. Chase Silseth has been for the most part, you know, what you envisioned him to be, but he has had a handful of outings where he's gotten knocked around a little bit. Have you detected any sort of pattern uh, or common thread among those, those maybe three games where he's gotten hit hard? Well, um, it was a long time ago. Um, Oklahoma comes to mind and the things that I took away from that, I think they're an elite offensive team. Uh, you know, they probably haven't had the season they wanted to have, but I think they're an elite offensive team that we were playing in a very offensive ballpark that took good at bats on that day. And so I don't think that really had anything to do with, with Chase. Um, Washington State game was kind of a strange game and, and the most offensive park <laughs> on a particular time I've ever seen, and at least in my time in, in the Pac-12. And that, that one just got away. I think that it doesn't have anything to do with him per se. I think it just, you were asking a lot out of the guy on, on Fridays and uh, he has delivered and delivered in a big way. And um, you know, you can't go through the PAC 12, not very many people do. Maybe Trevor Bauer did it, but very few pitchers go through this thing completely unscathed. And I'd give Chase a, an A and a, a 90 plus percent grade in terms of his execution this season. I think he's far better than even his numbers suggest and his numbers are pretty good. You've talked a lot about TJ Nichols' talent, his upside, um, but do you think the role that he's in now is the right role for him at this stage of his career, kind of maybe being a pitch two, three, four innings out of the pen as opposed to you know, being one of the starters as he was early, earlier this year? You know, I have great confidence in, in him no matter what we do. And, you know, I mean, it's not said or done that you know he won't start again this year I mean I could probably likely see that happening so I think his last three outings have been very good I think uh, Friday was pivotal to allow us the chance to come back in that game and, and, and get that win which was a great win 
I thought he was he was dominant that game against Grand Canyon. And I thought up at Stanford, he got us out of a, a two runners on jam when we brought him in the game uh, against a really good offensive team. Got the next two guys out quickly. And then, you know, I think Tommy Troy's, you know, superstar in the making and, and got a good swing on him. So I'm very pleased with what he's done the last three weeks. I think he's improved in terms of his execution. He's improved in terms of his tempo. And I think if you asked him, you know, the first inning, the seventh inning, five innings, two innings, it's about execution and he has plenty of, of talent to execute. So I, I don't know, is probably the answer, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we have time for one more question. We'll go back to Brian Peterson. Yeah, the, uh, I guess the weekly Preston Price update, how's he looking? Yeah, threw a bullpen yesterday. I think we're really close, which is exciting. Is there, a, do you have like an idea of if, if he were available to pitch this weekend and you got him out there, uh, would you then want to maybe rest him for for the final weekend of the season or is it once he's back you you feel that he's ready to be back for the the outset yeah I when he's available to pitch he's going to pitch and he would he would be very upset with me if he was available to pitch and did not pitch and he's probably in a little better shape than I am right now so I'll let him you know we want to get him back out there I'll tell you that and, and we're we're right there thank you thank you coach uh, questions from Mac Bingham, please raise your hand. First question, Michael Lev. Mac, you've done really well uh, since Jay moved you to a higher spot in the lineup. Why do you think that has been an advantageous move for you? Um, honestly, I think it's just the work that uh, we've kind of all been putting in. Um, I've been coming early with uh, Coach Johnson and Coach Wanaka and just kind of tweaking some things here and there. And um, I think it's just getting more comfortable as the season's gone on. I don't think there's been uh, any significant change, but um, it's it's nice to see. Sure. You weren't you weren't in the starting lineup at all for a little while. And then when he puts you back in, you were hitting third a lot. When you first saw that posted up on the on the wall or whatever, or however it's done, were you surprised at all? Um, yeah, I was a little surprised to be honest, just I hadn't been in that three spot um, all year. So uh, at first glance, it was a little a bit of a surprise, but um, you just have to have confidence in yourself and the work that you put in with the coaches. Do you think you see different or better pitches at all when you have like Brandon Bossier batting in front of you and Jacob Berry batting behind you in that in that three spot? Definitely. Um, I mean, this is a dangerous lineup top to bottom. And uh, it definitely helps when you got those two kind of uh, in front of you and behind you. Um, they're going to want to pitch to you and hopefully get you out um, so they don't have to face the next one. But uh, definitely. Sure. And you mentioned, you know, working with Jay and uh, Coach Wanaka, different tweaks. And every batter seems to have a, a little different something that they work on with those coaches. What did they work on with you to, to get you uh, into the form that you're in right now? Um, it's just getting back to kind of trusting yourself, uh, being using your ath athleticism and uh, definitely starting to swing with your legs from the ground up. And um, we worked on those and uh, definitely starting to see it now. Next question, Ari Koslow. Oregon State's pitchers lead the conference in strikeouts and you guys lead the conference in walks drawn. How important is it to kind of not get ahead of yourself to kind of stay uh, stick to the approach that you guys have been doing all season. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's going to be a really exciting game, and we just have to be ourselves. Um, we got to control the, control the strike zone and uh, see the pitches, use our eyes, and uh, slow the game down for sure. And uh, we just got to be ourselves out there. And, you know, it's we're going to say it leads most of the major uh, pitching statistics in the conference. And obviously, as we get into the tournament, you guys are going to be facing high level pitching. So how much, you know, how much helpful do you think this will be facing this type of pitchers as you guys head into the tournament play? Um, it's extremely helpful. Like as a competitor, you want to face the best. And uh, that's what we are about to be facing right now. And uh, it's important to get us ready. Um, but you want to focus on now and coaches preach about focusing on the present, that pitch, that at bat. So. Uh, we're just focusing on this weekend. Next question back to Michael. 
you know, coach said uh, the other day that if you guys aren't doing schoolwork or at the ballpark, you're on your phones. Um, and I think a lot of us, you know, are the same. It's, it's hard to avoid uh, social media. And this time of year in May, there's lots of talks of talk about the tournament, uh, projections for the field of 64, all that kind of stuff. How hard is it to keep those things out of your mind uh, as we kind of approach the stretch run of the season? Uh, yeah, definitely. That's part of the world we live in um, today. But I think this team's done a great job on just kind of having the blinders on and uh, focusing on each other and um, just putting in work every day. And um, I mean, luckily, I, I don't have a Twitter, so I don't even see half the things. But uh, we're definitely just, like I said, focusing on this weekend and um, what's ahead. And not not having a Twitter. That's probably a smart move. Um, so I know you're not coached um, directly by uh, Coach Yeski, but I'm sure you have friends uh, on the team who are pitchers. What, what are some of the things that they say about him? I think it's just he he gets the best out of every guy. Um, every guy's different. Maybe they're more of an off-speed uh, first guy or um, fastball heavy, or but he gets the best out of each one. Um, definitely the pitchers have been controlling the strike zone a lot more, throwing strikes, getting the head. Um, and you definitely see a confidence up there from every single guy. Do we have any more questions for Mac? All right, thank you, Mac. Thank you. All right, we're gonna finish up with questions for TJ Nichols. If you have a question, please raise your hand. First question, Michael Lev. TJ, how long have you known Coach Yeski? I knew uh, Coach Yeski when he was at Oregon State, probably since I was 13. Um, not like directly, but indirectly through the Susacks. Um, and then just talking to him when he uh, came here. And then, so yeah, a few years. Sure. What, what do you remember them saying anything specific about him as a coach or as a person? Um, as a person, an elite person. Um, I think Daniel's dad describes him as like a second father. Um, and that's how we all see him. Um, so yeah, he's a competitive dude, very serious, uh, great coach, knows a lot of, a lot about baseball for sure. How big a factor was his presence here in you coming here? It was a, it was a big factor. Um, I was glad to see his name as the pitching coach and, um, coach Johnson speaks highly of him and, uh, I've seen what he's done over the years and he's a great coach, um, great person. So. It was, good. It, was a, it was a big factor. Sure. So going from sort of knowing of him to actually working with him on a daily basis, what have you learned from him? What do you think makes him an effective coach? I think a big part of it for me was the mental side of the game. Um, sometimes I get too emotional and um, just trying to fix that. Um, him and actually Chase Silseth have been helping me with that. And then obviously the physical stuff. Um, he knows so much and I've never really had a pitching coach, um, before, before this. So he's helped me a lot with that, but I look more the mental side more than anything. Does he ever talk about his Oregon state days? Does he tell stories or anything like that? Not really. Not to our, not to our pitching staff. Next question, Ari Kozlo. Oregon state's hitters as a group lead the conference in the strikeouts. I know coach Johnson likes to take every you know, conference game and series has the same, but I guess the team has strength as much as they do. Is there any kind of emphasis in where you guys can be a little bit more aggressive this weekend compared to, you know, most weekends? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I'm going to stick to my game plan. I know that's what he's telling all of our pitchers to do. Stick with your game plan, um, be competitive, and just be yourself. Do we have any? Yeah, Michael, go ahead. I know you missed some time um, with an illness a few weeks ago. How bad was it and how much weight did you lose because of it? Uh, I lost about seven pounds. Um, I was sick for about a week. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm back. I gained the, gained the weight back and I'm feeling healthy again. Sure. What, what is your weight at the, at the moment, your playing weight? 182. 182. Okay. Do you have a goal for next year or the, or the year beyond of kind of like where you'd like to be? Uh, I get this question a lot. I usually just say as, as much as I can gain is what I'll, <laughs> what I'll try. Um, maybe 195 would be ideal, but that's that's pushing it for me. <laughs> sure. Do you feel do you I mean, do you feel like it's one of your your biggest goals of the offseason to, to add more strength and bulk? I think so. 
um, eating more and then working out a lot, sticking with my routine. It's hard to gain a lot during the season. So uh, during the off seasons when I'll try and make those gains back. Sure. How do you um, like your the role that you have currently compared to the role you had when you started the season, being a reliever as opposed to being a starter? I like them both. Um, they both have their advantages and disadvantages. Um, I feel like I'm more successful out of relief right now. Um, and I'm hoping the team win more. So that's what I want. And that's what I'm going to do. Do you change anything as far as effort level when you know maybe you're only going to go two or three innings versus, you know, I need to, I need to stretch this out to, to five or six? Nope. Coach S, he uh, always tells us that you shouldn't be trying to save some for the tank because you need to use it um, every pitch, every batter competitiveness. Um, so, no, not really. It's the same. Next question, Matt Moreno. A lot of the pitchers recently have mentioned confidence. Uh, where are you seeing that kind of show up most right now for you guys on the mound? I think confidence is huge, especially for me. Um, after struggling for a little bit, you need it back. Um, and I think that I gained that back during GCU game. Um, and then a lot of pitchers, um, yeah, it's, it's important. And definitely when everybody has confidence, we all bond together better. And it's a great atmosphere to be a part of. Next question back to Michael. I know you go way back um, with Daniel. Um, so maybe some of the things that he's doing don't come as a surprise to you, but what can you say about um, how well he's hitting given how much he's catching and how physically taxing that is? Yeah, I mean, what he's doing is crazy. I've never seen anybody do it. And then uh, we played baseball growing up um, since I was eight or nine. And if anybody asked me if, you need, if you chose one guy to get a hit in, in a spot, who would you choose? I would always say Daniel Susak. He's, he's a phenomenal hitter, um, elite hand-eye coordination, and power is off the charts. So, why would, he, why would he have been the answer to that question? I think just all the hard work he's put in and just him succeeding over and over again um, is impressive, and I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. One last call. Do we have any more questions for TJ? All right, thank you, everybody. That's all we have for today. Thank you.